Now, mass tracking, this is basically an, uh, an alternative to rotoscope. I hate rotoscope. Um, it never comes out clean enough for the amount of work and CPU that it needs. So uh, mask tracking is pretty much my alternative. So this is a clip from a music video I shot in Atlanta. Um, this is an artist sinister. So we're just trying to find a clip where he doesn't have too much arm movement. Um, just looking for a clip where it's just his body moving. Should be decent. All right, we're gonna make it pretty short. I'm just gonna trim comp to that work area. This clip's a little out of focus, but that's fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate. And the so the way that mass track works is you won't find it in here. That's why it's a bit of an Easter egg. So what you do is you select the pin tool. As soon as you create a mask, it will come up with this uh, new box. So I will just create a light mask around the body. Now there's a couple different ways you can do it depending on how you um, find a workflow for this technique. Generally, I like to stay tight around the body, but I don't want it to be right on it because I prefer to feather rather than have the keyframes be too accurate. Basically, I leave it to as much as you can position, scale, rotation, and skew. Just because anytime that I might move closer, I would want scale to work. Position is the main thing we're doing, and rotation does help. Skew, I've noticed sometimes it helps the technique, sometimes it makes it a little more difficult. So we're just gonna see how that one works. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and stop it. We were most of the way through. I'm just gonna... So I just clicked shift and select did the node so I can bring it down and we're gonna run that through again. As soon as I see his arm come up, if it doesn't track well, we're gonna stop it again, bring that in. What I would probably do is take that curve and just pull it out a little more and continue. Stop again. You don't have to do this. It all goes into your feathering and how much you really care about um, being super accurate. I know most people wanna be super accurate all the time, but there are ways you can get around it. All right. And what we're gonna do to get rid of um, any discrepancies is I'm gonna select both and I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit so I don't have to worry about all these extra pieces. Okay. And so now, just to show how the effect would really work, let's say we wanted to have the background look all trippy. I'm gonna throw an effect on the back where it's all bulgy and weird, and then I'm just gonna make the colors all crazy, just, just uh, as an example, so. All right, so just making, making the background look crazy and we'll see how that plays. You can kind of, you can see this masking. So it's doing a good job other than remember how I put the mask slightly over his skin. The way that we will fix this is we'll click M to go into mask. We wanna open up all of it. And so we will feather a little bit. That's the first thing we'll do. It's actually quite a bit of feathering. And then for expansion, we'll bring it in. Actually, it looks like Spanning it actually helps a little bit. I'm gonna set this to third so it'll play a little better. And as easy as that. So pre-visualization is pretty important when it comes to cinematography. And if you are a motion graphics designer or into 3D, even in the slightest, whether that's been using Cinema 4D Light and After Effects, or you use Autodesk or Maya, what I'm gonna show you is how you can pre-visualize your lighting setups using Cinema 4D. And I can take your pre-visuals looking like this into looking like this. I'll also show you how you can get some of these assets for free and how you can really take your pre-visualization skills to the next level. So go in the comments and let me know if you're interested in me doing a video like this. And if everybody's down, it's the next one up.